Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Yeah, good morning, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. And today we wanted to do kind of a follow-up to a previous video that KY4BDP uh, Brian did, uh, talking about the uh, lightning arresters, surge arresters, uh, that you can put in line with your coax cable coming from your antennas. And so we want to do this follow-up, uh, and we had uh, talked about uh, some of the aspects of working with your station, uh, how to reduce RF interference in your station. There's uh, toroids and various kits and things. I've used uh, the same kit from the same, uh, or the same company, uh, the kits uh, Polymar for my station radios, my FT991A and my uh, FT891 I have in the uh, the car and uh, so we wanted to follow up to that and so what I did uh, is uh, and I'm, I'm not 100% finished with the project I need to kind of clean things up a little bit but I didn't really have a good station ground for my uh, station either and part of the reason uh, other than being uh, slightly lazy is I'm on the second floor of my house uh, it's a brick house and uh, I really didn't want to uh, punch holes, uh, drill holes in the wall if I could help it. Uh, and I uh, got new windows, and I can't really run things out through the windows very easily anymore. It's great to have nice new windows, but it makes uh, taking cables in and out a little bit more difficult. So as I looked at my situation, <clears throat> I finally realized that I had a pre-existing hole in the wall that I could use for routing the 8-gauge uh, uh, solid copper wire out and down to a couple of grounding rods in the ground. So I ordered a uh, kind of a bus bar, uh, uh, bigger than I needed. I forget, I think this one's uh, 15 positions or, or something. It's, it's more than enough positions. You can see I've run a bunch of grounding straps from the radios and the uh, tuner I'm using right now and uh, power supply and, and all those different things. Also from those, I have some of those uh, MFJ uh, lightning uh, surge arresters that uh, KY4BDP covered in his video. So I've got everything routed over here, uh, but you can also see the uh, number eight uh, copper that it'll uh, route around and, and head out and go down to the uh, the two. I'm using two four foot uh, bars in the ground. Uh, if you can put uh, an eight foot lightning rod in the in the ground, uh, that's great. Sometimes your soil conditions and, and where you are, that may make that difficult, even even really impossible. Uh, so you can go with uh, two four foots. You could even go with four two foots. You want to get as much metal in the ground as you can, and uh, and so you just you do the best job you can. We don't always have a perfect situation where we can uh, can do things and maybe follow uh, you know follow the ultimate best practice. Now, one of the things, and you'll see this in a number of shots, you can kind of see it in part of this shot, you don't want to put hard 90 degree turns in your copper as you uh, route that out and down into your grounding rods. So I've, uh, I tried to make sure and avoid that as I routed this, uh, this 8 gauge copper, uh, and you'll kind of see that uh, in a number of different shots. Uh, the high power electricity does not like to go around 90 degree bends, so you just want to be uh, careful and try not to put hard 90 degree bends uh, you know, into the copper. So again, I've got the, the, uh, the bus bar, mounted it, and um, I've got all my, uh, my grounds going to it. And then of course, as you can see, I took the, uh, the 8 gauge down. Now, again, the importance of this, uh, there's, you know, there's a number of things. Now, where I'm located, uh, I'm in a little bit of a depression, but also on a little bit of a hill <laughs> here in Kentucky. So I'm not as high as I could be. There is a little bit of, uh, of a hill, in fact, just south of me, uh, pretty much between me and where our club repeater is. So uh, I've currently got a six element uh, two meter Yagi pointed uh, down towards the club uh, repeater site, which gets me in pretty good, but there's some construction on that hill. So we're gonna have to see uh, if that construction means I have to do anything further to maintain a decent uh, connection. Working with that and uh, uh, needing to ground the DX commander antenna I have, 
that's coming in the two meter i may end up putting something else uh, there in the backyard here's one of the uh, lightning surge arresters that we have and so again it's uh it's one of those things where uh, we have this need again being on the second floor and being where i am not totally in a depression but slightly in a depression uh, i have trees around me so the odds of uh, of my antennas taking a direct hit are actually quite low. And uh, and that's that's fairly true for, for a lot of folks. Depending on where you are. Now, if you're out on a, on a wide open farm and you've got a 50, 100, 150 foot tower up, yeah, your tower may take a hit. For a lot of folks, a direct hit is not really what you're trying to guard against. They happen. But more often what happens is you have a nearby hit that's still strong enough to send a surge of current in through your cable line, your phone line, your main power line, or something like that. Uh, it's, it's really more the indirect hits we want to watch out for. So we still want those, those lightning surge arresters. We still want proper grounding. Uh, if you take a direct hit, you know, our house, uh, and it probably wasn't even a direct hit, but in, in high school our house took a hit, and it blew the door off the oven coming in through the power. Um, my brother and I have actually been, been almost hit by lightning uh, three or four times. Now, here's where I'm using an existing hole to go out the wall. Uh, I know it's not very pretty, but it was an existing hole. This was actually for the original phone line, and we haven't had a hard, hard line phone like a lot of folks for years and years. And so I finally realized, it's like, oh, I've already got a hole that goes out through the brick, and I don't have to drill anything new. So I ended up using this, and I'll work on cleaning uh, this, this hole up and stuff uh, a little bit later. So it was nice to be able to use a pre-existing hole. Uh, if I had really, really needed to drill a hole, I could have done that. Uh, I've got the masonry bits and so forth. But I generally try not to put any more uh, holes in, in, my, in my home than I, than I feel like I kind of need to. So routed the cable out, uh, took it down to the ground. So you saw earlier in the first, the first uh, picture, uh, about a 50-foot uh, uh, reel of, uh, or spool of, of, uh, of wire. It wasn't really on a spool, but just loosely wound. And uh, I've, I thought that was kind of way too much. I was thinking I was going to need 35 or 40 feet of that maybe. Uh, but keeping everything loose, again, those, those relatively loose bends, not putting hard 90 degrees and all that kind of stuff, and then going to two ground rods. I decided to hit two ground rods. Uh, you'll kind of see here in this, this video. Uh, I used all but about three feet. Now, there's slack in the line and, and some stuff like that, and it could have been routed differently. I may route things a little bit differently. I may even change the position of those uh, of those ground rods uh, later. So there is plenty of, of cable there, but as, as currently uh, routed, I use about 47 feet of it. Uh, put some silicone in the, in the outside of the, of the wall there, and I'll clean up the inside of the wall there. It's uh, uh, in my office. So... Again, for newer hams, which a lot of our videos are sort of aimed at, uh, although a lot of our information can be good for anybody, uh, we want to make sure that we uh, help reduce RF in our shack, want to make sure we're, we're grounding our equipment, which can help you get better, <clears throat> better reception. Uh, it may not always make a big change. Now, I'm pretty fortunate. I've got a, 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 you know, a toroid kit uh, in my main setup here. I really don't have a whole lot of, of noise. My, my S level is, is almost zero. Uh, some of the things I've done have probably helped to do that. But I think sometimes you're just a little bit lucky in, uh, in where you are and, and what you've got in your house and what's going on. I, I just don't have a, a significant noise floor. I'm not deep in the middle of a big town. I'm on the edge of a smaller town, you know, 300,000, a little bit more than 300,000 people. Uh, so I feel fortunate that I don't really have severe noise levels, but I've also done some things to help help reduce that, uh, to help bring in those weaker signals. So, and we did a video on uh, on helping to find a, a noise uh, a noise source in your house. Uh, KY4BDP did a, a video on that as well. So, you know, take some time as you're building up your shack, uh, plan some things out, uh, get some some lightning surge arresters. Uh, uh, get uh, you know get uh, some a grounding scenario put in place. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do everything all at once. Uh, if you're again on the top of a nice hill, way out in the middle of, of nowhere on a farm or something, and you've got a pretty good tower or something up, yeah, that's a that's a, a much higher chance of having a, a direct strike. Uh, all my stuff, there's there's trees taller than everything I've got. Uh, most of my house, my chimney is taller than most of what I have. So I'm not as concerned about a direct hit, but it's really, again, those, those nearby hits, those indirect hits, they can still do plenty of damage. 
So, um, again, as, as a kid, I was leaning against a backstop uh, at a baseball uh, uh, practice out on a farm, and lightning struck a little ways away, and uh, several of us were leaning against the steel back, backstop on the farm where we were practicing, and we felt the electricity through that steel. So uh, the, the electricity will, will travel even with an indirect hit. So uh, that's more often what you're going to run into, and it can still be uh, very damaging. So uh, make sure you, you get some uh, grounding in your in your property. If you if you really don't feel like you can get a full eight in, uh, eight foot uh, grounding rod, go with say two fours or or three fours, something like that. You just want as much metal in the ground as you can get, and almost anything is better than nothing, right? Now you may not be able to have the uh, the the perfect setup, but almost almost anything is going to be better than nothing, and except for maybe the more severe. Uh, you know, kind of a strike, you know, you can still save your equipment from uh, from other kinds of, of incidents that might be damaging if you had nothing at all. So um, I've got this in. I'll probably rearrange things a little bit at some point, but uh, at least I can feel a little bit better. Now, here in Kentucky, where we live, central Kentucky, south central Kentucky, uh, we're coming into fall and, uh, and, and then winter. Of course, these are not our most severe times of the year right now. Uh, we still occasionally can get uh, some some lightning or, or, or storms, uh, but it was also nice and cool, and it, it was made it a little bit more pleasant to do you know any kind of work if you're going to be outside or anything. And I'll be uh, pretty much ready for next spring and summer when things do get very tend to get very exciting here in uh, in the state of Kentucky as far as the weather goes. So we just kind of wanted to do this follow up and show some of the equipment. These four foot rods, uh, I'll link these in the description below. Uh, you can get all this stuff on Amazon or, or places like that, uh, probably most of the big box stores. A bus bar, some uh, at least eight, eight gauge copper. I wouldn't go smaller than eight gauge. Uh, you can go bigger. You know, if you want to buy six gauge or, or something uh, even bigger, feel free. Uh, copper is expensive, <laughs> but buy as much as you want. And, uh, you know, we just had electrical service put in for our new uh, Monticello repeater uh, site. We're doing the refurbish there. We've had the series on the abandoned repeater site, which we're doing some more work on that this week. And so another video on that series will be coming out pretty soon. And the electric company put a new, a new uh, I think it's a 200 amp service in for us. We don't need that much, but uh, got a new service. Guess what they grounded their equipment with? 8 gauge copper. Okay, so it's not that it can't work. But anyway, um, get your stuff grounded. Uh, make sure you have some, some surge arresters in line. And uh, your equipment will last you a long, long time. You know, there's plenty of hams out there running on, on decades old equipment. Old does not necessarily mean bad. I mean, some of the new stuff has cool features. But a lot of it, the, a lot of the fun is just getting on the air. And, uh, and having fun and not having complicated, you know, feature rich. You know, it can be, a, can be fun, but it can also just be complicated. So uh, just a quick follow-up to the, uh, the arrestor uh, video. This is Chris, KY4CKP, for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73. <laughs>